This is the inside of the 2021 Auto Sleeper Winchcombe. If I firstly come to the main control panel and I tap it, we can then turn the 12 volt on just here. Along the top we have the external temperature. We have this little symbol here just indicating the solar panel is active. And we have this lightning strike just letting us know that we're currently hooked up to mains electricity. We then have the humidity and the internal temperature. If I now press this button just here, we can then turn on the lights. They can then also be individually turned on and off on their own switches. And then we also have the Warning light on and off, and it will also do the door entrance light as well. Water pump on and off just here. We need the water pump on to be able to get water out of the taps and fill the boiler if it's been drained down. We then have levels just here. So we have how much water is in the fresh tank and how much water is in the waste tank. And then we have power levels, so we have condition of leisure battery, condition of vehicle battery, how many amps we're either using or we have coming into the van depending, the mains current and the solar current. Battery selection just here, so V for vehicle. L for leisure, whichever battery is selected on here is the battery you are using to run the back end of the motorhome. It's also the battery you are charging whilst you're hooked up to the main supply. And then we have the settings menu just here. So at the moment all charging is set in smart mode which is the easiest setting to have it on. So you'll see the active battery there is the leisure battery and because we're hooked up to the main supply that's charging that and the solar panel is charging the vehicle. Then after a period of time, it would then swap over. Automatic tank fill just here, if we're using the whale filling system. So just make sure that this is turned on. And then we have tank heaters on and off just here. So even though these are now turned on, they're not actually active until the temperature outside drops below about three, four degrees. Next we have lights that will come on when we turn the control panel on. Everything is in off at the moment. You can adjust this to whatever you would like. Key beeps on and off. Water level alarms for the fresh and waste tanks on and off. The brightness of the backlight and how quickly the screen times out when we're not touching it. Time and date set. And then we come back to the beginning again. Beside this control panel, we then have the control panel for the Truma heating and hot water. So to turn the control panel on, just press the button just here and it will then come on. And you'll see we have a series of icons and as I rotate the button, they begin to flash. So if we start with the first icon there, that is for your heating or air conditioning. So if I click on it, we will see we have heater or AC. So if we start off with the heater, if I now click on it, you'll see it's off. And if I now begin to rotate, you'll see we can pick whatever temperature we would like it to be inside the motorhome right the way up to 30 degrees. So once you've decided on a temperature, just click to store it in and you'll now see a little flame has appeared above. That little flame there just represents the heating system and it's just letting you know that you've set a parameter. Whenever the heating is actually in operation, the flame will begin to flash and it will continue to flash until it's achieved the temperature you have asked. If I now go right the way across to the little picture of the fan, this is the circulation fan for the heating. And if I now click on it, we can either run the fan in eco or high. If we now go back and we now 
turn the heater off. We can now go back into it and go into the AC. And again, if we now go in, you'll see it's off. We can put it into vent mode, cool mode, heat mode, or just having an auto. So for the moment, we just go into cool mode, click on it, pick the temperature we would like it to be, click again and store in, and it will then come on. We can then go to the fan again, and alter the speed. We can control the airflow just here, and here, and here. I now go back into it. Again, I can then turn it off. If we now go across to the next icon, this one here is for the hot water. And again, if I now click on it, hot water is off. And again, all I now do is just rotate. And we can heat hot water in eco mode, which will give us a temperature of about 40 degrees. We can heat in hot mode, which gives us a water temperature of about 60 degrees. And we can also perform a boost. If we perform the boost and the heating's running, it will turn the heating off as it needs to use the extra power. And again now, if I select Eco, the icon will begin to flash once the boiler is fired up and it will continue to flash until it's achieved the temperature you have asked. If we now move across to the next icon, this one here is power source. So this is how we select what we want to be using to run the system. So if I click at the moment, we are running on mains electricity at two kilowatts. If I rotate, I can lower the power consumption to one kilowatt, which is very handy if we're on a low amp site. We can run in dual fuel if we have both power sources available to us. So a mixture of gas and mains at two or a mixture of gas and mains at one. This particular setting is extremely handy, especially in the winter months. If you want to get up to temperature nice and quickly, it will only consume the gas as it's required. And then lastly, if we have no main supply, we can just run on the gas. If both heating and hot water are off, and you go to the circulation fan, you can also use it to vent as well. If we now drop to the lower icons, this first one here is for a basic timer. So just click on it, pick a start time, and then an end time. And then you can then just pick on what you would like. So let's say we want the air conditioning on in auto we want hot, hot water at 40 we want to be using dual fuel and if I then turn the timer on the timer icon will then come up in that corner and then within that time period those settings would apply if we now go back into it we can then turn it back off again and when we go back in we can then alter it again Next we just have the lighting for the air conditioning unit, so it's off and then if I rotate you can see we can then start turning it on and if I continue to rotate we can brighten it up. Next if we're going to be using timers and etc we need to set the clock and that's all this one here does. And then lastly, we have the settings menu. So within that, we have offset just for the thermostat, which is just there. We have the air conditioning controls, just leave that well alone. Temperature, just if you prefer it displayed in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Brightness of the screen. 
12 or 24 hour clock. Language. Index, which is more for the technicians. It just lets them know what software it's running. And then lastly, full factory reset. From time to time, these control panels will for up error codes. It will usually be something relatively basic. I can make it error now if I want to, just by turning the control panel off just here. You'll see we have W255H and a warning triangle. This is just letting us know that it's lost 12 volt as it is linked to this control panel. If I now turn the panel back on again, it will then automatically put itself out because we've rectified the problem. So nine times out of 10, if the error code is something that's easy to be sorted out, and you can find all the error codes either in the downloadable instructions or just by Googling it. Once you've rectified it, the error code will go out. If you've tried and it still hasn't gone out, I always then suggest just going back to the warning triangle and double clicking on it. Sometimes it will then say no error and disappear. If that doesn't work, if you still have our, um, systems running, just turn them off. Again, if that still doesn't work, then just turn the control panel off just by holding the button in. If you've done that and it still doesn't work, then I always suggest lastly doing the factory reset because nine times out of 10, a factory reset will then just sort the system out. This Truma system can be controlled via the Truma app. If you are going to do that, firstly, download the app onto your device and then make sure the Bluetooth is turned on and then fire it up. It will firstly ask you to come to the overhead locker just here and within that we have the iNet box. So it will ask you to press the Bluetooth button just here and it will then send out the Bluetooth signal and you will then be able to connect up to it. Once you've connected up you will then be able to control your Truma system locally via Bluetooth. If you want to control it from further afield you can purchase a pay-as-you-go SIM card, pop it in where my finger is just here, register it through the app and then you'll be able to control your heating and your hot water from much further afield. If we now come to the front bench seat just here and just remove the cushions. You will now see if we lift up the leisure battery just here. We then also have the 12 volt fuse just here. We have some fuses down here as well. These are labelled up and for more bits and bobs on the outside of the motorhome like marker lights etc just the back of the LPG filler just there. We then have the Sterling Power Progressive Digital Software Control Battery to Battery Charger. We do not need to do anything with this, it's already set up by the workshop so it is best left alone. And if we now lift up this part here, you'll see there's a heat shield on it. We have the Truma boiler itself. Some gas isolation taps just there. Top one for the fridge, then we have heating and hot water and at the bottom the cooker. They're all in the on position and quite frankly they can stay like that. I would say if you do smell gas in the van, go underneath it to the gas tank and isolate it there. Tucked to the back there we just have the boiler drain valve. So to drain the boiler down for winterization, we just need to twist this blue diamond just here and then a blue button will pop out at the base of the unit where my finger is. Do make sure that the water pump is turned off. And then to close it again, twist and push the blue button back in. If you are fully winterizing the motorhome, I always 
suggest that you also open up all the taps inside because this will help release any airlocks in the system. To refill it, pop it back how it is now, close all of the internal taps, fill up the fresh water tank and then turn the water pump on. Let the water pump run for a few minutes and then begin opening all the taps. They'll cough, they'll splutter as they force the air out. Once they're running freely on both hot and cold, then close again and the system will fully reprime. If you do forget to drain this boiler down, it isn't the end of the world as this boiler, boiler drain is automatic. So if the temperature inside the van drops below about 3-4 degrees, that blue button will just automatically pop open and drop all the water out of the boiler to frost protect itself. All you have to do if that's happened is just push the blue button back in. If it will not stay in, it's just too cold in the motorhome and you will need to turn your heating on to generate some heat to allow it to reset. Underneath the other bench seat is storage and you will also find a safe under here as well. If I now just come to the cupboard just here, we have the battery charger just there and then beneath that we have the consumer unit. So we have the trip switches just here, so we've got the three individual grey MCBs, the main RCD and the yellow test button just there. So if something's not working on main supply, just come to check to see if you've tripped. We then also have the 12 volt fuses just here. Again, they're all labelled up and everything corresponds in the auto sleeper handbook. So if something's not working on 12 volt, just check to see if you've blown a fuse. Along the top here, we have two isolator switches for components that use main supply. So we have the amber one just here for the heating and the hot water system. So if I turned this off here and I was running the Truma system on main supply, I would get that warning triangle and an error code because I've isolated it here. So this is just best left like so. Again, it's more for maintenance, turning it off here. We then have the green one just here, which is for the battery charger. Again, if I turn that off, I will not be able to charge the batteries up when hooked up to mains electricity. This one here will illuminate if we have reverse polarity connected to the motorhome. This can sometimes be found on some continental sites. And lastly, we have full system shutdown. So if you're not planning on using the motorhome for a longish period of time, just press this black button here and it will then shut the back end of the motorhome down and kill any residual draw on the leisure battery. Above, in the locker just here, we have the digital amplifier for the MaxView TV aerial. On and off just here, and then just control the boost on the dial. Dometic microwave just here. This particular microwave does not require a microwave plate. The isolator switch for it is just here. This will only work when you are hooked up to mains electricity. And then we have all the normal stuff. We have quick start just here, stop, etc. And then we have all the power settings, presets, etc. Beneath that is the Fetford fridge freezer. On and off just here. This is an automatic model, so as long as it's on A for auto, it will find the best power source it can for you. So because we're currently hooked up to mains electricity, this put us onto mains with a little picture of the two pin plug. If I now went outside and pulled the mains lead out, it would then automatically attempt to fire itself up onto gas. And as soon as we start the engine of the motorhome, it will then automatically go over to 12 volt maintain to keep itself cold whilst on the move. As you can see, the screen disappears after a few seconds. Just tap the on-off button to bring it back. We can take it out of automatic if we want to. So I can manually put it onto mains. 
manually put it onto 12 volt maintain we are going to get an error code at the minute because the engine isn't running and I can manually put it onto gas but auto is the easiest option to have next we have temperature control and then lastly we have the unit's heated jacket on and off the heated jacket is an anti-condensation device so it basically needs to be on when you're using the motorhome in warmer temperatures this will just stop the unit from building up condensation behind it which would then run down and form a puddle underneath freestanding table just here We then have the hob, so we've got the electric hot plate just here which runs when we're hooked up to main supply, on and off just here. Then we have the three gas rings and that is just push in, twist and push the igniter. Beneath that we then have the grill, and then the oven. Beneath the oven, just tucked right at the very back, there is a plug plugged in, which is for the electric hot plate. We then have the extractor fan just here. The remote control from for the uh, air conditioning unit. Like I say, you can either use it via the Truma control panel or the app, or you can actually just control it with this as well. So virtually the same again, on and off, just on the blue button just there. We then have the modes, so we have cool, heat, auto, and air recirculation. Temperature control just here, and then fan speed just here. Again, you can set timers in here. It also has the night mode as well. And you can control the light as well from here as well. Washroom at the back. So we have the shower cubicle just here, light switch just here. This will also turn on the extractor fan as well. Do make sure that the shower screen is fully clipped back for travel. We then have the mirror and the lights can be turned off on that switch just there. Toilet just here to open to the cassette. Just slide the lever across, push to flush. Level indicator just here, so this will illuminate when the cassette needs emptying. If this has been left open and you try to remove the cassette from the outside, it will not come out, so do make sure that this is closed.
In the wardrobe we have a smaller table and the table pole just there that can drop in to the hole in the floor just there. And we also have the Huawei mobile Wi-Fi unit on and off just in the center here. You will need to insert the SIM card to set the system up. The SIM card pops in the back here so you just unclip this back panel and then it can be inserted. And then once you've done that you can then search for the Wi-Fi on your device. It will display the Wi-Fi number, link up to it, pay the subscription and then you can have mobile Wi-Fi within the motorhome. The front bed is very easy to make. You can either have it as two singles or if you're going to have it as a double it's just a matter of slightly lifting up and then pulling both across and then pulling the cushions all in like so. I usually flip the cushions over, they're a lot less bumpy when they're flipped over. You'll see there's a slight gap just here and that is what this fold out infill is for. It just literally just slots down and folds over to fill the gap. The low level lights can be positioned anywhere along the rails just literally twist them and they'll drop out and then just reinstall where you want and twist it back in again we then have smoke alarm and carbon monoxide alarm just press the buttons from time to time just to make sure that they are operational